A very good morning, students. Uh, this is your English teacher Bedu Sehrawat, and I hope you all are doing great at your place. All right. So today in this class, we are going to uh, start with a new topic that is sentences. Okay. So we will be talking about three sentences: simple sentence, compound sentence, and complex sentences. All right. So before proceeding further, there are few terms, okay, which will be used uh, very frequently by us when we proceed further. So it's better that we discuss all those terms before we start. Okay. So these are the few things, a few things which we need to. discuss before we uh, start with our actual topic that is sentences all right so first is subject and predicate now beta subject is the doer of the action okay that is one thing uh, that is doer of the action or we can also say uh, subject can be something or somebody about whom uh, we are talking in the sentence all right so that is called the subject basically the doer of the action all right and predicate is whatever is uh spoken about the subject is called its predicate or we can simply say when we have a sentence except uh, the uh, subject the rest part of the sentence is its predicate uh let me give you an example here my sister wrote a beautiful poem all right so here beta if you see who is the doer of the action who wrote the letter okay so that is my sister all right so that is our subject and rest of the sentence is called its predicate so this is subject and the whole group of word that is its predicate all right now second thing is finite verb i know we have already done this chapter finite verb so basically finite verbs are the verbs which show us the tense in the sentence okay so finite verbs are tense showing verbs okay tense showing verbs and uh, we can also say that you know when if we change the number of the uh, the subject if we change the subject if we change the number okay or if we change the tense okay finite verbs change their form in the sentences let me tell you how he has done his work okay he has done his work now we have to find out whether this verb the main verb here is do whether it is a finite verb or a non finite okay uh, on the other hand on uh, opposite to a finite verb non finite verbs they never change their form we have already learned about that right so let's change the subject here it is singular here let me make it plural they so will it remain the same will this verb will it remain the same no it will change they have done okay or let me uh, change it into the into past our sentence was he has done his work if we change it into past it will become he did okay so we see every time we we change the tense or we change the subject or the number 
the verb it gets changed right so it is also the main verb in the sentence okay finite verbs now next is dependent and independent clauses our last uh, topic was clauses only okay so i um, i hope and i'm sure rather that it's still intact in your mind so still uh dependent and independent clauses we know clauses uh, a clause is a group of words okay which has its own subject and its own verb okay that to a finite verb right so dependent clause is i mean it is uh, uh it cannot stand on its own i mean if we read it alone if we read it separately it will not give us complete sense right and to make complete sense dependent clause needs to depend upon the main clause that is independent clause or principal clause okay so let me give you one example so that you can understand it in a much better way see bhavik was absent because he was ill okay bhavik was absent because he was ill now beta see here in this uh, sentence we have both the clauses dependent as well as independent now see independent clause it always makes complete sense so bhavik was absent okay this is complete uh, sentence and it gives us a uh, complete sense as well so this is our main clause or independent clause and because he was ill if we uh, read it separately if we remove this part because he was ill i mean we don't get the complete sense here it 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 sounds incomplete okay and to get a uh, clarity we need to read the whole sentence here all right so this is the independent clause and this is dependent clause okay all right next is a uh, coordinating and subordinating conjunctions um i have already told you about this as well see when there are two independent clauses in the sentence okay when there are two independent clauses in the sentences they are joined by coordinating conjunction okay coordinate means to help each other basically okay coordinate so that's why coordinating conjunction uh, i mean uh, both the clauses they help each other right so we join uh, independent clauses or main clauses with the help of coordinating conjunctions and you can remember coordinating conjunctions with the help of this word fan boys right f for a and n nor b but o or y yet s so all right so these are uh, our coordinating conjunctions which always join to main clauses and now subordinate conjunctions are like oh we have the example here see subordinating conjunctions always join the main clause and uh, the subordinate clause okay like you see here bhavik was absent because he was ill now this is our subordinate clause right and this is the conjunction because this is subordinating conjunction okay so you can clearly see here subordinating conjunctions are used to join a subordinate or dependent clause with an 
independent clause with the main clause okay so there are many subordinating conjunctions like because although when if all right so uh, all these are uh, subordinating conjunctions i hope after discussing all these things we are all set to proceed further uh, for our main towards our main topic that is simple compound and complex sentences very good now first we will discuss simple sentences okay simple sentences beta simple sentences whenever you uh, uh listen this word simple sentences you will instantly you have to remember this thing that it always has one subject plus one finite verb okay so simple sentences always have only one subject and one finite verb not more than that okay and if we talk uh, about simple sentences we can simply say that it is simple sentences is what one main clause okay in simple sentences we get one main clause or one independent clause right see let's see the example or better we can also say here that one subject and its predicate okay so either way you can uh, uh, you know define the simple sentences right now the students performed really well okay the students performed really well now if you see here beta i told you simple sentences means one main clause okay and one uh, main clause is what one uh, subject okay it has its own subject and one finite verb so let's find out whether this sentence uh, fits these two conditions or not okay so this is the subject right this is the subject and where is the finite verb very good this is our finite verb finite verb now see about simple sentences i told you either you can say that it has a subject and uh, its own finite verb or we can also say it has its subject and predicate so in that condition also we can say this is our subject and this is the predicate okay so this whole sentence okay this is one main clause you are getting my point this is one main clause or independent clause or principal clause okay let's write one more sentence here my mother bakes delicious cookies for me all right now again beta this is one main clause okay now see this is subject all right this is our subject and bakes bakes is the finite verb all right so this is the example of 
सिंपल सेंटेंस ओके सिंपल सेंटेंस कंसिस्ट ऑफ वन मेन क्लॉज ओके आई होप सिंपल सेंटेंसेस आर क्लियर टू यू नाउ वेरी गुड नाउ वी प्रोसीड फर्दर टू कंपाउंड सेंटेंसेस ऑल राइट सो आई हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू बेटा कंपाउंड सेंटेंसेस are uh, they always consist of two main it may be more okay so at least two main clauses will be there okay two main clauses joined uh, with the help of a coordinating conjunction okay so i have written uh, three sentences here <clears throat> okay which are obviously compound sentences okay and we we'll try to uh, you know uh, analyze the sentences how the conjunctions are used all right and which is the main uh, clause and which is the subordinate clause like that okay so <clears throat> i have already told you that uh, compound sentences in that there are two main clauses and they are joined by coordinating conjunctions fan boys okay fan boys for and nor but or yet and so okay now beta in these sentences you will find that both the clauses okay on both the sides of the conjunctions both the clauses are equally important okay and they can uh, they uh, uh, convey the sense uh, well okay it they give complete sense even if they are uh, read separately all right so our uh, first sentence is he worked hard yet did not succeed now beta first thing i want to tell you here is that you may think that ma'am told us one day uh, that uh, you know every all the clauses they have their own subject and uh, their own verb but here we don't uh, see any subject right but beta see he worked hard and he did not succeed okay so here though it is not written it is understood okay this is understood subject that the same person who worked hard the same person lost it okay that means he did not get success right so here beta he worked hard this is our clause 1 and that to main clause right he worked hard and he did not succeed so this is main clause 2 okay and here is our conjunction which is joining the both clauses okay and this is a coordinating conjunction yet right so next is she must confess uh okay wait she must confess her fault she must confess her fault or she will be fined all right she must confess her fault or she will be fined now beta again we have two clauses first clause first main clause she must confess her fault this is main clause one all right she will be fined this is main clause two right and here we have our coordinating conjunction or okay beta you can see here they uh, see she must confess her fault even if we remove the second part it makes complete sense right and if we uh, read this part second part she will be fined again it gives us complete sense so that is why the this is called main clause right all right our third sentence is she finished her work and returned home right here she finished her work all right this is main clause 
one and returned home. Here also, beta see, there is no subject, but it is understood. She returned home. Okay, and she returned home. So this is our main clause two, and here is the coordinating conjunction and. Okay, so I hope it up. Our compound sentences. Uh, I mean, you are able to understand now, right? You must have understood what compound sentences are. Okay, they are just uh, a combination of two main clauses, which are joined by coordinating conjunctions. All right, very good. Now we will move to the next type of sentence. That is complex sentence. That is complex sentence. I have written uh, three complex sentences here, beta. Okay. So now uh, let's have a look at the sentences. First is, if you speak the truth, you need have no fear. Okay. Now, see. Now I have already told you complex sentences are one. Main clause plus one subordinate. Okay, subordinate clause. One main clause and one subordinate. Of course, there can be more than one also. But one main clause is, uh, I mean, it is necessary to. Uh, for the complex sentence to have one main clause at least. All right. Now, and they both are joined with the help of subordinating conjunctions. All right. We will always find a subordinating conjunctions just before the subordinating clause. Okay. All right. So, if you speak the truth, you need have no fear. Now, Vida, here we have in this sentence we have one main clause and one dependent clause, right? So, this part of the sentence you need have no fear. Okay? This is our main clause. Okay? Because it gives complete sense, right? On the other hand, if you speak the truth, that doesn't give us complete sense and to get uh, com uh, full clarity we need to read the main clause along with the subordinate clause all right so this is our subordinate clause okay and one more thing beta we also call it if clause okay um, you may uh, you know get to see it in your books so don't get confused this is called if clause also which starts with if and uh, if is the subordinating conjunction all right now next is although he is poor he is honest now he is honest is the independent clause okay he is honest is the independent clause and here we see the subordinating conjunction although and this is our subordinating clause. Alright. Although he is poor. If we remove this part he is honest. We will not understand anything. What the speaker is trying to convey. Alright. Next is he failed because he did not work hard. Now, he failed. Gives complete sense. This is our main clause. Alright. And here, starting with the subordinating conjunction because this is our dependent clause. Okay. So, this is how we, uh, you know, uh, write or we frame a complex sentence using at least one main clause and one or more uh, subordinating 
clauses. Okay. So, beta, I hope uh, simple compound and complex sentences are clear. Now, still if you have any doubt, please do not hesitate to ask. Okay. Thank you so much.